It's Friday, January 5th, 2024. Merry 12th day of Christmas, and welcome to episode 84 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, the first city council meeting of 2024 adjourns at 1 a.m. Alameda Fire Department rescues a sinking sailor. The Alameda Police Department releases crime statistics for November, and the news is mostly positive. The doors to the Main Street Ferry Terminal reopen, while the doors to Pagano's central location prepare to close. And a look at some new laws coming into effect this year. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story. As noted in episode 83, the subject of Alameda issuing a ceasefire resolution in the wake of the current Israel-Hamas war has been very much on people's minds, with two vigils and a large contingent of representatives from Alameda Friends and Families for Ceasefire making their presence known at the final city council meeting of 2023. That trend continued in the first meeting of 2024 with agenda item 10D, consider authorizing the mayor to send a letter on behalf of council to federal officials regarding Gaza ceasefire. With over 150 members of the public in attendance, a vote was taken to address item 10D first in hopes of giving as many people as possible the chance to comment while reducing comment time from two minutes to 90 seconds per speaker. That vote passed three to two, with Trish Herrera-Spencer and Malia Vela voting no. During the comment period, opinions ran two to one in favor of the mayor's letter, with many agreeing with the mayor's stance of ethical leadership. Those opposed to the measure expressed confusion about why the mayor chose to address this humanitarian issue and not others, and an insistence that the city government stick to local issues. After 79 participants spoke, there was a brief break with 100 speakers left in line. The council voted to further reduce speaking time to one minute, with Vice Mayor Tony Desog dissenting. At 11 p.m., with 70 speakers remaining, the decision was made to move all other business to the next meeting. As the evening progressed, speakers on both sides of the issue expressed that they felt unsafe in light of some of the comments being made. Public comment was eventually closed at 12.27 a.m., after an exchange between Mayor Ashcraft and Vice Mayor Desog over the wording of the letter, Councilmember Trish Herrera-Spencer said she felt it wasn't appropriate to, quote, even hear this issue and make a decision on it because I think it's outside the jurisdiction of our charter, end quote. Councilmember Tracy Jensen motioned to present a letter to Alameda's congressional representatives supporting House Resolution 786 addressing the subject of de-escalation and ceasefire. The mayor seconded the motion, but the vote ended in a 2-2 stalemate, with Vice Mayor Desog and Councilmember Herrera-Spencer opposed. Councilmember Malia Vela had left earlier in the evening to care for a sick family member. So, after six hours, the meeting was adjourned at 1 a.m. For a more detailed look at the events of the meeting, see Kelsey Gore's article at alamedapost.com news. The Alameda Fire Department was also busy on Tuesday evening. At around 5.30, 21 personnel responded to reports of a sinking sailboat near the rock wall in the vicinity of the USS Hornet. Two fireboats responded and discovered a submerged 27-foot sailboat with one man aboard. An AFD rescue swimmer was deployed from one of the boats, and the sailor was brought to the Ensenal boat ramp, where life support care was administered until the man was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. As Alameda Fire Division Chief Dave Port told KTVU News, the rescue was something of a difficult one due to the conditions. Quote, some of the challenges we faced were the tide coming in, we had wind and rain conditions to operate in, and a normal night is a challenge in itself. End quote. For details, including a link to KTVU video of the rescue, see alamedapost.com news. The Alameda Police Department has released their statistics for the month of November, and on the whole, the numbers are moving in a promising direction, with one notable exception. First, the good news. From 90 arrests in October, a 25% decrease to 67. Of those 67, 24 were felonies, 43 for misdemeanors and infractions. Only five of the 67 arrests were juveniles. Collisions fell to 48, a six-month low. Auto thefts dropped 14% to 118. Unfortunately, stolen vehicle recoveries dropped 35%. The troubling statistic, catalytic converter thefts rose from 10 to 16, a 60% increase. The 16 matches July's total but remains well under June's 34. Calls for service and reports taken also hit six-month lows. For a deeper dive into the numbers, including details of some specific incidents and a link to APD's full report, see Adam Gillett's article with alamedapost.com news. As noted in Episode 83, the Main Street Ferry Terminal back up and running after a 10-week shutdown for repairs, retrofits, and upgrades. The refurbishment project included the repair and replacement of the existing terminal infrastructure to bring the site into compliance with current seismic safety requirements. The project design also included elements to facilitate future electrification of the terminal for zero-emission ferry vessels. The reopening means the Oakland Short Hop is back, as is the Chase Center run for Warriors home games. 
Weekend service from Seaplane Lagoon has been discontinued. The overall schedule has been juggled a bit. For a complete look at the updated schedule, see alamedapost.com slash news. One door opens, another closes. Sadly for many living in the West End, that door that's closing is Pagano's in Neptune Plaza. Originally established in 1950 and located on Lincoln Avenue, Andy Pagano's neighborhood hardware store became a fixture in Alameda. A second location was opened in 2010 at South Shore, and in 2015, the Lincoln Avenue facility moved to Neptune Plaza. A series of circumstances led to the decision to close the Central Avenue location. Pagano's CFO, Chanel McCoy, noted that while business had picked up during pandemic, sales began to drop off in 2022. She attributed that drop-off to contractors leaving the area. Additionally, multiple tenants moved out of the plaza in summer of 22, resulting in increased expenses for Pagano's. While sales increased somewhat during last winter's heavy rains, ultimately the decision was made to close the facility, likely by mid-January. The South Shore location will remain open for business. For additional details, see Kelsey Gore's article at alamedapost.com news, and check out this week's Two Birds from Alameda. Seagull and Goose are having a bit of deja vu over the whole thing. New year, new you, new laws. As happens every January, a new set of laws in place in California, at least one of them already having an effect. Let's take a look at some of the additions. AB 2188 will protect most Californians from employment discrimination on the basis of legal adult use of cannabis. In a state where recreational cannabis use is legal, this was to be expected. Employers may not fire, penalize, or refuse to hire an employee based on the results of hair or urine tests for marijuana. The law does not apply to federal employees or construction workers, It also does not mean employees can be impaired on the job and are, in fact, subject to blood or oral swab tests in those cases. The use of cameras in law enforcement is increasing as Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, L.A., Glendale, and Long Beach receive the go-ahead to establish a speed safety pilot program using cameras to monitor speed limits in school zones and designated safety corridors. As of July 1st, landlords will no longer be allowed to charge more than one month's rent as a security deposit for furnished or unfinished rental properties subject to certain exceptions. Landlords who own no more than two residential properties that include no more than four dwelling units total may ask for a security deposit of up to two months' rent. SB 525 raises the minimum wage for health care workers at large public and private health facilities and dialysis clinics in California to $23 per hour by June 1st. Another minimum wage increase has already resulted in something of a ripple effect. AB 1228 establishes a minimum wage of $20 per hour for fast food workers beginning April 1st. It creates a process to develop minimum fast food restaurant employee standards related to wages, working conditions, and training, and allows the wage to be increased annually. It's this last new law that's been receiving national attention. As reported by multiple news outlets in reaction to the April increase, Pizza Hut franchisees are set to lay off in excess of 2,000 delivery drivers, ranging from Los Angeles to Tahoe and beyond. Those franchisees will instead shift their delivery services to third-party providers like DoorDash and Uber Eats. For a look at these new laws, including links to the original legislation, see alamedapost.com news. Event-wise, a little quiet this weekend as folks get back into the groove after the holidays. Remember to keep an eye on alamedapost.com slash events. Saturday brings the farmer's market from 9 until 1. Also, since it's the first Saturday of the month, the Little Flippers class for kids 5 to 12 at the Pacific Pinball Museum. First Sunday of the month means the Alameda Point Antiques Fair. As always, you might want to plan your travels around that, especially around the Posey and Webster Tube area. Sunday brings Pilates and Pours to the rake at Admiral Maltings. Get a little workout, followed by some regionally brewed refreshment. As always, details at alamedapost.com slash events. Keep us in mind for your organization's next event. Our calendar is free to use, and you can submit your events yourself. If you need a little help to get started, we're here for that too. alamedapost.com slash submit dash event. Quick note, if you're looking to adopt a new furry friend, Foz is offering $45 adoption fees for adult cats and all dogs this month. Don't forget, join us as a member, alamedapost.com slash memberships. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, as well as our own subreddit. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Apple News. Find the postcast wherever you get your podcasts, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. For those who celebrate a joyous epiphany, or as it is also known, Little Christmas, or in Ireland, Women's Christmas. Why is it called Women's Christmas? Because tradition held that the men did the housework on that day, while the ladies were finally able to relax after the busy holiday season. Either way, if you've still got your decorations up, you're in good company. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with Episode 85 of the Alameda Postcast.